Okay, welcome back to episode two of the Civil Disobedience Resistance series. First, I'd like to introduce my viewers to the newest member of the Resistance. I rescued this little tiger kitten from the cat concentration camp last night, aka the pet store. I paid $20 to spring him from the slammer. He was so scrawny and bony and hungry, I gave him a can of tuna, and I've never seen a cat climb into the bowl to devour the food. For such a pipsqueak, he's a scrawny little devil. I haven't named him yet. I'm thinking maybe Alex Jones. What do you all think? Okay, onward. Back in March of this year, Gary North, a frequent contributor to the excellent LouRockwell.com website, wrote an article explaining why Tide liquid detergent was being shoplifted around the country in pandemic proportions. He wrote, The thieves could steal anything. Why are they stealing Tide? because Tide functions as a black market currency. To function as a currency, a commodity needs the following. He said, Tide qualifies on all six. It is weakest in number six, but it has a high enough value to be worth stealing. People will develop alternative currencies when the economy gets tight. These currencies are not taxable. Profits are not taxable. If people are looking for an item to store for preserving long-term value, Tide would be a good candidate. Gold is better, but Tide is good. If someone thinks the economy is close to collapse, I don't. Liquid Tide would be a prime candidate for barter. Okay, back in March, Gary North didn't think the economy in the U.S. was close to collapse. I'm not sure if he's revised his opinion since then, but that is immaterial to our discussion. I remember reading a book back in the 90s called How to Make One Million Dollars in the Stock Market Automatically by Robert Lucello. It was a very interesting book. It contained a chapter on barter economy and what makes good alternate currencies when an economy is blown to pieces. He was a member of the armed forces in World War II and was stationed in Japan just after the surrender during the American occupation and reconstruction. He noted that gold and silver were abundant and was not in high demand as a currency. What was in high demand and could be traded for anything in a barter situation was soap and cigarettes. Contrast that observation with North's six factors that make up a functional barter currency and you will see that both of these items fit all six factors to a T. Now, I want to elect what I think is the ultimate commodity currency for use in the coming American economic collapse. Okay, I'm going to show you the picture of the commodity I have in mind. Here it is. Yes, good old marijuana, Mary Jane. It's as American as apple pie, Chevrolet, and George Washington. Let's apply the six factors and see if marijuana fits the ticket. Number one, is marijuana in wide demand? Check, it has a huge demand, and with good reason. It is a miracle plant. Absolutely amazing the applications this plant can be put to beyond just the incredible potency as both a recreational and entheogenic compound. Number two, is marijuana recognizable? You'd have to be from Mars not to know marijuana, both growing in the wild or packaged in a baggie on site. The smell of this plant alone will make it recognizable instantly. Number three, is marijuana transportable? Yep, they're smuggling it everywhere in the world in sizes from mere grams to tractor trailers full of tons of the green goddess. Number four, is marijuana durable? Hell yes it is. When cured properly, it can be stored for years and not lose its wonderful potencies. Number five, is marijuana divisible? Again, this is a huge resounding yes. It is sold by the gram, ounce, pound, ton. Any quantity can be used as an effective measure and store of value. Number six, is marijuana high value in relation to volume and weight? Now where Tide, 
Tide scores weekly on this point, marijuana is probably at its strongest. I'm from Colorado and the medical marijuana industry is booming so high and hard, it is changing the landscape of the local economies. It is being sold for about $20 a gram now and for as much as $400 an ounce for the highest potency strains. Now I feel marijuana is even better than gold and silver. Now why would I say that? Gold and silver are not renewable, but pot is. All you have to do is keep growing it. Over and over and over. All the currency you'll need right there in your own backyards. It really is as good as growing money on trees. Now I double damn guarantee you that in an economic apocalypse, you will be able to trade high grade marijuana for anything you need to survive. So I strongly suggest you start a marijuana garden tomorrow. It might save your ass when you need to trade for something vital to your continued physical existence in the near future and have lots of guns and ammo to protect your barter currency operation from the zombie hordes which will be going apeshit in the wake of the collapse. Now for you pinch-faced law and order freaks which believe all that shit about marijuana being the bane of society, I suggest you breathe deep, get some oxygen to your brain, and read the book by Jack Her called The Emperor Wears No Clothes, Cannabis and the Conspiracy Against Marijuana. If we all started growing pot tomorrow and started trading with it, we'd topple the biggest monopolies in the world almost immediately, these being the petrochemical and pharmaceutical industries. Read the book by her to figure out what I just said is absolutely true. All right, that's all I've got for now. Next, we're going to learn how to create our parallel economy. Until then, out here.